traumatic cardiac arrest. So sometimes it happens that you arrive to a patient and he's already in cardiac arrest due to trauma. Sometimes, of course, the state of the patient deteriorates and patient from life-threatening condition goes into the cardiac arrest. So it's good to know the, uh, the main reasons of the traumatic cardiac arrest. So uh, around 50% of, uh, of traumatic cardiac arrest are due to hypovolemia, some hemorrhagic shock. So that's the first thing to check. Uh, the second and third reason is uh, hypoxia and tension pneumothorax. Uh, that stays for 13% each. And 10% of the traumatic cardiac arrests are due to cardiac tamponade. And we've got like 15% of other causes. So uh, the main reversible causes of the cardiac arrest are hemorrhage, tension pneumothorax, cardiac tamponade, and hypoxia. Um, usually the rhythms of the traumatic cardiac arrest are pulseless electrical activity and uh, systole. So they are the most frequent. Uh, We've got two types of PEA. You might have hyperdynamic, um, high rate pulseless electric activity that looks on the monitor like healthy, healthy heart. And, and this PEA, so hyperdynamic fast PEA, is um, having a better prognosis than Brady PEA with large. QRS, white QRS, and uh, low heart rate, which is uh, which has the prognosis similar to asystole because it's the sign of dying, dying uh, heart. In in PEA patients in traumatic cardiac arrest, uh, the hyperdynamic PEA might be um, there is possible low cardiac output. Uh, in those patients, the cardiac output that cannot be felt uh, at the carotid artery. So if you will arrive and have the patient in cardiac arrest with hyperdynamic PEA, really concentrate yourself and search for the reversible cause because um, there probably is uh, the hemorrhage, tension pneumothorax, heart tamponade or hypoxia that is provoking the cardiac arrest with the PEA. Ventricular fibrillation is very rare. It of course has the best prognosis, but it can be found in patients who have trauma due to, due to some not traumatic problems like acute coronary syndrome. Um, so of course, after diagnosis of the cardiac arrest, you check the rhythm and then you react accordingly. So asystole PA without the fibrillation and ventricular fibrillation and pulseless VT you defibrillate. Uh, what are the priorities in traumatic cardiac arrest? So uh, the highest priority is the treatment of the reversible causes. So your role as a doctor is to look for the killer. Uh, hypovolemia, hypoxia, tension pneumothorax and cardiac tamponade. And what about the chest compressions then? So we we use we are used to think that the chest compressions are let's say the, the must so of course the chest compressions are are the, are the basic component of CPR but uh, when the cause of the cardiac arrest is uh, tension in the heart tamponade or hemorrhage when the patient has uh, no blood to to be compressed or ha it has obstructive shock so the ma main arteries and veins are compressed then the compressions would be not as effective as in cardiac arrest due to, uh, to the, due to acute coronary syndrome, for example, in normal volemia patient. That's why the chest compressions in traumatic cardiac arrest have lower priority than treating uh, the hemorrhage, than decompressing the tension pneumothorax or performing emergency thoracotomy. So if you suspect the hemorrhage, tension pneumothorax or heart tamponade being a reason of the cardiac arrest, then the chest compressions shouldn't um, stop you 
or interfere with the ter with the therapy of the reversible causes. They should not delay the treatment of the reversible causes of the traumatic cardiac arrest. And what really helps in the diagnosis of the causes of traumatic cardiac arrest is the ultrasound, because uh, usually the hemorrhage is is to peritoneum, so the fast examination is perfect to to find the fluid in the peritoneal cavity or pleural cavity. You can very quickly diagnose the cardiac tamponade. You can very quickly and precisely diagnose the tension pneumothorax. So uh, uh, resuscitation of the traumatic cardiac arrest without ultrasound is really really difficult and according to the ERC guidelines 2015 you should use ultrasound uh, while you treat the patient in a cardiac arrest not only traumatic cardiac arrest so what's the therapy of reversible causes uh, of the main uh, main reversible causes of the traumatic cardiac arrest so when it comes to hypovolemia hemorrhagic shock that's a massive uh, massive transfusion protocol in the hospital and management of the massive external bleeding so you stop the bleeding give blood give blood products when it comes to hypoxia you secure the airways and ventilate with 100 percent of oxygen when it comes to tension motorax you perform trachostomy or unilateral or bilateral if you are not certain which side is affected if there is chest trauma, chest trauma on both sides you just perform bilateral trachostomy and when it comes to cardiac tamponade, the emergency thoracotomy is the gold standard therapy. When to, let's say, stop resuscitation. So the, the, the gold standard, let's ERC guideline is 20 minutes of asystole when you have considered all reversible causes and the resuscitation takes, let's say, 20 minutes and that was 20 minutes of asystole, continuous 20 minutes of asystole. Uh, then you can think about declaring the death of the patient. Uh, so the same goes into traumatic cardiac arrest. So when there is no return of circulation after treating reversible causes, and it takes 20 more, let's say more than 15, 20 minutes with assistedly, you, you can withhold resuscitation. When you see no activity of the heart on ultrasound uh, or some clots already built up in, in the ventricles, then you can stop resuscitation. Uh, when you arrive and you see the massive trauma incompatible with survival, like decapitation or penetrating heart trauma, like mm, multiple wounds of the chest or loss of brain tissue, uh, then also you can withhold resuscitation and uh, you might not even start it. So that's, uh, um, those are the articles and guidelines that I've used uh, while I was preparing this, uh, this seminar, so you can go through them. And just to summarize, uh, this ERC guideline concerning the trauma patient was, the, let's say, the core um, thing that I was analyzing and going step by step during this seminar. Uh, I hope now it is more um, more sensible for you and uh, if you've got any questions just um, just send me an email with those questions I try to answer them so thank you very much for watching thank you very much for the concentration uh, goodbye thank you